There's a lot of confusion when it comes to buying an A and D FS I NTEP balance. And hopefully in this video, we will make it clearer about the differences. And hopefully you will not order the wrong balance. We are Precision Way in Balances, and you can visit us at either balances.com or scaleman.com. We are an authorized A&D dealer and try our hardest to keep all of the FSI Legal for Trade digital scales on the shelf ready for immediate shipping. In this video, we will be using the FS 300IN, and what we'll be covering is applicable to all of the FS IN models, which include the FS 120IN, FS 200IN, FS 300IN, FS 1200IN, FS 2000IN, and FS 3000IN. So if you listen carefully, you heard all the models end with the letter N, which designates NTEP approval or legal for trade. Many people don't really see the difference between the FX 300IN and FX 300I. So many people, um, if they require a legal for trade scale for a commercial application must order the legal for trade version and not the non-legal for trade. If you're a pharmacy that needs to meet the requirements for your pharmacy license, you want to order the FS 300I. And if you're an Oregon medical marijuana dispensary, you also need the FS 300I in. Well, Colorado marijuana dispensaries, as of March of 2016, allow you to use the FS 1200I in, 2000I in, or FS 3000I in. Eventually, we feel Colorado's recreational cannabis dispensaries will follow Oregon's rules requiring you to purchase the FS 300I in since this model has a verification scale division where E is equal to 0.01. So what are the differences? Well, if you were to buy an FX 300i, you would receive a manual like this. And if you buy the FX 300i and legal for trade version, you will receive the same manual. What you will have is an amendum, one page, that shows you some slight differences that they've converted the FS 300i to the FS 300in. So what you will see is you will be receiving two sealing screws, a sealing plate, and also it discusses how to calibrate the balance. We're going to have to go to the rear of the balance and press the switch 201 to initiate the calibration. So one of the differences is you're going to receive this one piece of paper. Um, the seal and screws. So you're going to get seal and screws in a bracket. They'll come in a plastic bag like so. And you'll notice on the seal and screws themselves, there's a hole. And that hole was for weights and measures to put a cable through it. So they would put a cable through it, and I'll show you, we'll, put, we'll install this on the back of the balance, but they would basically put the cable through it and then crimp it. They typically crimp it with like a lead slug, similar to what they would do to your electrical outlet um, on your home, so they know there was no tampering. Um, the other thing on a legal for trade version, if you bought the FX 300i, this last decimal place here would not be boxed. So you know right away if you have a legal for trade scale for the FSI series, if the last digit isn't boxed, you have a non NTEP version. So the other thing is they've changed the internal software. With the FS 300i, one would just simply press the cal button and you'd start initiating a calibration. But again, as discussed in this amendment, you have to open up the rear of the balance and press the switch S201 to initiate calibration. So those are the differences uh, basically between the non-legal for trade and uh, legal for trade. Uh, the whole goal really with legal for trade is to prevent someone from initiating a calibration. Um, every balance should be calibrated prior to putting this balance into use. Uh, weights and measures, uh, 
you should check with your weights and measures to determine whether you can purchase your own calibration weight or if you have to hire a local scale technician to a licensed technician to perform the calibration or sometimes weights and measures will calibrate the scale when they do the inspection and put the scale into service when they do put the scale into service they will end up putting a uh, seal typically on the side of the balance so here's an old seal that we have before from the state of Colorado actually and here's another seal that we have from uh, the state of, I believe this is Wisconsin, uh, New Jersey. And you'll notice on the seal, they, the operator puts his signature or license number, and then there's a date. And basically every year, like on this particular uh, seal, they'll, they'll, they'll punch a hole in it. And the balance is typically um, inspected yearly. So you need to put your scale into service, and then they will um, put their stamp on it. Um, Let's just, uh, so we showed you the BOTS number, which is really important. Uh, let's just show you the back of the scale in this mounting bracket. So, if we turn around the scale, you'll see here is that compartment that we talked about. And so there's a plate here, and what you have to do is this screw gets removed. And again, weights and measures, when they come there to do their inspection, typically they're going to do all this installation. They want to put the bracket on. So the, we remove that one screw. The bracket goes in like so. And then they would put this screw in here. And again, what this does is it prevents you from ever accessing this door where you have to press the switch S201 to perform calibration. So these two screws get removed and your sealing screws go in Like so, and this is after calibration has been done because once you've sealed the unit and they put this wire in, the balance is not going to be able to be calibrated. And then again, they would just fish the wire through, and then they'd put a crimp. They put the uh, they put the lead so it would go through like that, and then they would just seal it. And like I said, sometimes they'd end up putting a sticker um, on the side of the scale. They might put it on the back, but they would seal that. Sometimes, too, what they'll use is they'll use these pressure-sensitive stickers. So they'll have the operator and the date. And if you ever try to remove it, what happens is the sticker will show that it's been tampered with. So you see how you have all these check boxes and X's. Every state, every county is different. Uh, just wanted to show you the different sealings that they use, but whatever they decide, uh, weights and measures controls the situation there. So anyways, we wanted to just show you so that you don't make the error that so many people have made, and that is, you know, a lot of people, they'll end up going into a dispensary. Maybe they want to open one and they want to see how another dispensary operates. They'll look at the model number, and again, the model says FX300i, so you would think, I'll search the internet and buy an FX300i. You need the FX300in. The same goes for the um, A&D FX1200i, which again they use um, in Colorado. We did make a separate video uh, discussing how to do the calibration step-by-step -step on these legal for trade scales. So if you visit our YouTube video, you can learn more. Uh, once again, we are Precision Weigh and Balances. We're an authorized dealer. If you do need one of these units, we appreciate it if you visit our website. If you have any questions, give us a call. Thanks for watching this video.